Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial today, and this is going to be me showing you how to do a button press or activating a little button which will open a door, which is similar to how I showed you how to make a raycast or a trigger, but it's going to be using a button press, and I'll show you how to create a simple timer to be able to so that it doesn't open and close. I'll talk about the animation, and we'll do all that today. So make sure to check out my Patreon if you're interested in supporting this channel. Be sure to check out the community Discord and be sure to check out my great assets on the Unity store. I'm going to be using my Door Interaction Kit, which comes with a whole bunch of different interactions for a basic raycast, a trigger, a key, a hinge and a button. So I'm just going to recreate this with you to show you how it works. So all I've got is a door here. This could be anything. It could be an object that's a box and it's got an animator. It's got a box collider. You don't need to do anything with the doll other than having an animation on it. I've got a cube here which is acting as my button and I've just made it red to make it obvious. And I've got a tag on it of doll button and a layer of interact because we're going to use that later. It has a box collider because we need to do that to do the raycast. And it will have a controller on it that when we click on this button it will do something to the doll that we're wanting to use. And then we will have a main camera or an FPS controller with a button doll raycast script or something similar. So to start with, I will link you in the description if you want to look at a tutorial on how to create an animation for the doll. But basically all you do is select to your doll, go to window animation, select your animation tab. You can click here to create a new clip. I go from zero to one second and I will just rotate the doll you might need to select the other pivot, go to the rotate and at one second, just rotate your doll 90 degrees. Then if you go window animator, you can set different states of the animations that you want to use. And from your entry, you want to make another or a different state, which you can right click, create state and just choose empty. And then right click it and set that as the default state and it'll just be an idle. It won't do anything because it'll just be empty. You can, it will already have one of the objects or the animations that we've created, which in this case was door open. And somebody didn't actually mention in the comments, which makes life easier. You can just control C and paste uh, a copy of this door open and you can make it door close if you just change the name at the top. And you set its speed to minus one. It will do exactly the opposite. So you don't have two different animations, which makes it slightly more optimized. So now we're in the we're all set up with our animations, we need to be able to create our raycast. So what we'll do is right click in the project panel, go create and choose C sharp. And I'll call this button door raycast two for this instance. So it doesn't interact or get in, in the way of what I've already written. So we're here at the start. So we need to do something called using unity engine.ui. And it's going to be the namespace to let us access the UI because we're going to want to potentially change our crosshair of which we've got. We'll get rid of the two starting methods and we'll start by writing something in square brackets, serialize field, and we'll write private integer ray length and set that equal to five. Then have another square bracket serialize field, private layer mask, and have that as type layer mask interact with a semicolon. Then another square bracket serialized field, private string, exclude layer name, and set that equal to null. I'm just making sure I set all the instances of these variables to something so it Unity can't bring up any just yellow warnings. So this one is going to be the name of our controller. So we can go back into Unity, we can right click, say create C sharp, and we'll call this one, we'll just call this button door controller two, just so that we have this ready. We'll have that open in Unity, but we'll carry on with our Raycast script. We're going to write private button door controller two and have this as our Raycasted object that we're going to find. So we're going to be able to find it and select it. We'll have a square bracket serialized field private key code and have that as open door key, which will equal key code dot 
mouse zero so that will be our left click and then we'll have another serialized field of private image crosshair because this is the image or the crosshair that we wanted to use to change its color we'll set that equal to null we'll have a private bool is crosshair active with a semicolon and then another private bool do once we can have private constant string interactable tag is equal to in quotes door button and this is going to be the tag that we'll use for setting our actual door button or the tag that we're going to use when we see it so under here then we're going to do a private void update because we're going to do our raycast in the update with two curly brackets below and we'll say raycast hit and then space hit with a semicolon and then we will say vector three forward as our local variable for this and we'll say transform with a lowercase dot transform direction with two up cases in brackets vector three dot forward with a semicolon on the end and I have integer mask is equal to one and with two less than signs we're going to do the layer mask dot name to layer in brackets exclude layer name so this is going to exclude any layers we don't want to actually see when we come to interact with something and then we can add one straight line which is between the z and the shift key you can hold shift to add it on my keyboard anyway you can say layer mask interact dot value with a semicolon so this will compare between layers that if there's a layer on the left that we don't want to if there's a wall in the way with a specific tag of wall let's say we won't let the raycast go through there and find something behind it so then we can say that if open brackets physics raycast open brackets transform dot position comma fwd comma out hit comma ray length comma mask and then below here we'll put two curly brackets then we'll say if hit dot collider dot compare tag in brackets interactable tag as we created at the top then we'll have another two curly brackets below and say if do once or if exclamation mark do once so that means if do once is false then we'll say that our raycasted object is going to equal hit dot collider dot game object dot get component and then in square brackets with two brackets on the end and a semicolon we will choose our button door controller 2 then we'll actually create a method called crosshair change which will control what we want to actually do when we found something then we'll say that under the two brackets we've just created We'll say that is crosshair active is equal to true because in that case we found an interactable object then do once is equal to false because we don't want to find this object again because it's unnecessary then we want to also check to say if the input now input dot get key down and then open brackets is open door key because we specified the key that we'd use at the top then we'd say that raycasted object dot and then we'd have a method that we want to use and I will just call this play animation for now because this is what we will set it won't like it for now because it'll have it'll eventually complain about it if we try to run it so we need to go to three curly brackets down which is at the end of this if statement for the raycast and we'll just do two line breaks and then we'll say it else then we'll have two curly brackets below there and say that if is crosshair active so if it's equal true then we'll do the crosshair change again like we were going to and do once will equal to false I'd put do once up here to false that needs to be true in this case just so if anybody got it wrong because I steered you wrong then what we can do is we can go three curly brackets below again just before our ending curly brackets we can say that void cross hair change in brackets bool and we can say on 
then we'll add two curly brackets below and say that if on and and do once is false then we'll have two curly brackets below again and say that crosshair dot color is equal to color dot red and also below there we'll have an else statement so if it's not uh, those two things it's going to be anything else then we're going to say that crosshair dot color is equal to color dot white and also say that is crosshair active is equal to false so I'll quickly then edit this so now we can say that crosshair change in brackets is false because we can pass that as something into our method of being true or false so we can say it's false and up here we wanted crosshair change in brackets to be true so I'll run through this we created a length at which we want our raycast to go look at the different layers that we've got we're going to be look for an object which will have the script that we've specified we set a key we're looking for the crosshair to be able to turn that red or white depending on what we're interacting with to look for the raycast do the raycast forward look between the two layers depending on what we've got do the physics raycast line check to see if we found an object with the tag if we have we need to say that we found that object and we can cross the, we can change the crosshair and we can do this um, find this object then we need to say that we have found an object so we can't do this bit again unless, unless it's changed unless we've looked away then if we press a key when we found this object we'll play what was ever in this script if not crosshair active will be false and we're not looking at anything anymore because we're not looking at a specified object with this tag then we will change the crosshairs accordingly now we needed to create a controller to control the actual objects themselves so now we can get rid of the starting methods in our door button controller script and now we can write a square brackets serialized field we can say private animator and have this as door anim and set that equal to null we can have a private bool of door open and set that equal to false we can have a serialized field and go private string and we can say open animation name so we can specify the name of our animation in the actual inspector so we don't have to specify it in script every time so you can use this as many times as you want so I can get that and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to forward that and paste that back in and call this instead of open I will just call this close animation name and then call this door close as my animation and then under here we can say serialize field private integer wait timer is equal to one because this is the time we're going to wait or we can specify in the inspector if we need to wait more time between when the next animation can play and then we need to have another private bool we can say pause interaction is equal to false for now then what we will do is under here we'll say private ie numerator which is going to be we we'll create a coroutine to pause the door so pause door interaction with two brackets then two curly brackets below and then we'll say pause interaction equals true because this is when we want to pause so we can't do an interaction we'll say yield return new wait for seconds and then in brackets we'll call this the wait timer because we can specify that again in the inspector and then pause interaction then equals false so we'll be able to do our interaction and like I mentioned in the Raycast script, so now it's going. So now we need to actually play a method or choose a method from our other script from our Raycast, and this one's going to be public void play animation with two brackets, then two curly brackets below. Then we're going to say if in brackets with an exclamation mark door open is false and and pause interaction is false. So that means if the door isn't open and pause interaction isn't happening, then we'll say that door anim dot play in brackets will say the open animation name comma zero comma zero point zero f, and that just means here's our variable for the animation name, the layer that our animation on, which was base layer, which would be zero, and 
any offset if we might want to delay the starting of the animation, but we don't, so we'll just have it as zero. Then we'll say that door open is equal to true because we wanted to test for that. And we also want to start the coroutine to pause door interaction. So you write start coroutine, then in brackets you write your method, and then you write two brackets as if to call a method normally and add a semicolon on the end. Now what we can do is we can just copy this set of lines, paste it in below, put an else if statement to be more refined. We can change this to if door open is true and and pause interaction is false. We'll say that door interaction, we'll say that door animation dot play and we'll paste in our close animation name. We'll set that door open is now equal to false, but we still want to use the timer because we will wait till the door fully opens or fully closes before we can do anything with it. So what we can do is we can go back into Unity now. I will remove my previous script from there. I will add my door button controller. You can see that now it's looking for an animator. So what we can add, we can add the button door here. We can see that we can now specify the door open animation, door close animation. The wait timer is one and it's currently not paused at the start. So you can check in your animator to make sure that it's door open, door close, which it is. Then what we can do is we go to our main camera and I will untick my button door raycast that I had before and I will add my new one. And you can see that the ray length is five. We can set the um, layer mask interact to interact. You may need to create it at the top and add a new layer. You can see that the open door key is mouse zero. We can specify a name of another layer if we say wanted it to be walls. You could create that in here and add one if you want to put a wall in front of the door, for instance. And then what we can do is we can also add our crosshair, which all it is is an image on a canvas, which is literally five by five pixels and it's tiny and it just changes in the middle of the screen. So we've got that. We also need to remember that on our button, we needed the tag of door button and we needed box colliders on everything. So now what we can do is we press play. We've got our door button raycast. You can see it changes the color of the crosshair. We can left click with a mouse zero and you can see that the door opens. Left click again, it closes. And if I press it again, but keep spamming it, it doesn't do anything until that timer has finished for one second. And of course, you can select the button and you can do this as many times as you need to or adjust the settings according for however you want to do it. But this allows you to have a button or a thing in your world and be able to control a door or an object, anything in the world and just do it simply. And if you want to check out the door interaction kit on the Unity store, you can get it for absolutely free. Be sure to leave me some feedback on there and be sure to check out my great assets on the Unity store. Be sure to check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel and be sure to check out my community Discord if you want to have a chat. So hopefully this helped you out. Give me your opinion, give me some feedback and I always love hearing from everybody. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.